Many people look at the MI-35 and just see an MI-24 Hind. So what exactly is this helicopter? Well basically, it's just an upgraded MI-24. But what did they do to the helicopter? Well to start, they gave it more powerful engines, as well as replaced the rotor blades, going from metal to a composite construction. They also changed the counter torque rotor, located at the back of the vehicle. Instead of the traditional three bladed rotor, they replaced it with an X shaped rotor, just like on the Apache and MI-28. These are largely cosmetic differences compared to the MI-24, so what about real, impactful changes? Well to start, they changed the wings. The MI-24 had three hard points on each wing, giving it six hard points in total. With the MI-35 however, they downgraded this, only giving it two hard points per wing. In real terms, this means that MI-35 can't carry as much ordnance as the MI-24, but because this helicopter is a lot more modern, it can obviously carry more advanced weaponry, which somewhat makes up for this. And this advanced weaponry is a theme that goes on throughout the MI-35. Gone is the rotary 12.7mm machine gun in the nose, replaced with two 23mm cannons, similar to the guns found on the MiG-21, a pretty common weapon in the Soviet arsenal. It also received modern FLIR, commonly known as thermal imaging. This brought the MI-24 from the 1970s to the modern day. The MI-35M is currently the most modern variant of the Hind currently in War Thunder, and is the highest battle rating multi-row helicopter currently in the Soviet tree. The rest of the helicopters beyond this are dedicated air-to-ground helicopters, not utility helicopters. This vehicle is by no means new, entering the game quite a while ago, and some people say that the MI-24 and MI-35 variants are now quite redundant because they're just too heavy and no longer able to compete with the more nimble, lighter helicopters. And I guess that's the aim of this video. Is the MI-35M worth grinding out? Well, sit with me lads and we'll find out together. Now, the MI-35M is a rank 6 battery rating 10.3 helicopter located in the Soviet tech tree. To unlock it, you're going to need to grind out 390,000 research points, and to purchase a vehicle, it's an additional 1,010,000 silver lions. To train the crew of this vehicle, it's 290,000 silver lions, and for the expert in ace qualifications, that's 1,010,000 silver lions and 2,600 golden eagles respectively. It's worth noting however, the expert in ace qualifications for helicopters just isn't really that useful boys. In terms of the rewards, when playing realistic battles with a premium account, you can expect an RP modifier of 452% and a silver line modifier of 225%. In terms of camouflages, you have none available to purchase for Golden Eagles, but have two different camouflages available on the Guardian Marketplace. That's enough background information lads, let's get into the nitty gritty stuff. Are you struggling to unlock new tanks, planes and ships, or feeling left behind due to not having a premium account? Well with the free GE Android app you can get it all for free. The developer of this app works directly with Gaijin, is 100% legal, and breaks none of the terms of service. Carry out small tasks, such as completing surveys and watching ads, and in return, you'll receive free Golden Eagles for War Thunder, speeding up your progression. When you earn 28 or more Golden Eagles, you can deposit them straight into your War Thunder account. Simple. If you download and install free G with my link in the description below, you can enter my personal code and receive 10 Golden Eagles for free. Using this link directly helps me as a creator, but more importantly lads, it helps you. So let's help each other. Download Free G from the Google Play Store and start planning on what you're going to spend those eagles on. Thanks again to Free G for sponsoring this video. The MI-35M is powered by two Klimov VK2500-2 turboshaft engines. These engines are very powerful and tackle one of the major issues with the MI-24 series of helicopters in general. That is the rather low power to weight ratio. While you can't quantify this the same way you can with a tank, it's no secret that the MI-24Ds were very big and well armoured. This meant their transmissions were a lot weaker than lighter, more powerful compared to their weight helicopters. While this was fine for the usual utility helicopter role of just flying around, but for an advanced air to ground helicopter, an upgraded engine was needed. And while the new engines did improve the performance of the MI-35, I wouldn't say it's particularly good. It feels very heavy to fly, while it is responsive at least in initial inputs from yaw, once you try and do any major turns the helicopter just freezes up basically. Like a lot of the larger helicopters in game, you really need to drop the collective in order to manoeuvre, which isn't really something that happens in the lighter helicopters. And as we'll cover shortly, there are helicopters currently in War Thunder which can carry a similar level of firepower, 
but have much better survivability and mobility. But speaking about survivability, how well armoured is this helicopter? Well, we've got 4mm of steel protecting the cockpit and vital engine components. We then have 55mm of bulletproof glass at the front of the cockpit. This is all well and good, but the main threats in War Thunder, at least to helicopters, are air to air or ground to air missile systems. So what do we have that can counter those? Well, initially, we have a HIRSS system. This is a helicopter infrared suppression system. Basically, this system vents the hot gases coming out of the exhaust away from the helicopter. You can see on the MI-35 that these hot exhaust gases are vented upwards towards the rotors. One lesson the Soviets learned the hard way was the threat of man pads towards helicopters. The reason this hot exhaust gas is vented upwards is to protect the helicopter from ground launched man pad systems which have infrared trackers. In the third rank of the modifications, we also have the IRCM. This is basically an infrared countermeasure, which dazzles incoming infrared missiles. It uses a optoelectronic station and basically blinds an incoming infrared seeking missile and causes it to lose track. The HIRSS system, as well as the IRCM system, as well as the 192 FLIRs, makes the MI-35M a pretty survivable helicopter, but Anti-aircraft systems like the ADATs don't use radar lock-on or infrared searching. They're basically Sakhalov's guided missiles. So while you are pretty much immune from air to air missiles, at least infrared guided ones, ground-based weapon systems like the ADATs or Roland is pretty much going to knock you out the sky, no problem. We then come on to the firepower, and immediately, you'll probably notice that there's no radar on this helicopter. Unlike some of the more modern helicopters currently in War Thunder, this helicopter has no air to air or air to ground radar systems. This isn't really that useful, at least in normal battles, although it is kind of useful in simulator mode. Anyway, unlike the previous versions of the MI-24, which had a 12.7mm revolver cannon or a 30mm autocan, the MI-35M has a chin mounted 23mm gun. This has two barrels, and a very high fire rate of 3,400 rounds per minute, although you can only carry 450 rounds of ammunition in total. Being 23mm in diameter, the guns aren't the most powerful in the world. With the armour targets belts, you can only penetrate a maximum of 29mm of armour, and that's at 10 metres. At combat ranges, it's much lower. So unlike the Apache and the Kamov or MI-28s, which can use their guns to actually take out enemy armour, you can only really use the 23mm guns of the MI-35 for soft targets, such as howitzers and AAA. We then have the four hard points of this helicopter, with two mounted on either side of the vehicle. And when this helicopter is stuck, you can carry 80 S8KO rockets. These are dumbfire rockets, but you do have a CCIP for both rockets and your main guns. These rockets have a high explosive anti-tank warhead, giving them 420mm of penetration. They also have a relatively medium payload of 1.69 kilos of TNT. They're alright, they're a little bit inaccurate, and they've got moderate post-penetration damage, but not amazing. We can then carry gun pods. These are the same guns that are mounted on the chin of the aircraft. While they have the same great fire rate and damage, they lack the penetration, just like the chin mounted gun. These carry more ammo, with 500 rounds per gun. There's not really any reason to use these gun pods to be honest bow boys unless you really want to meme on people. There are much better options. We then have the 9M114 Sturm anti-tank guided missiles. These are Sacklos guided and travel at 550 meters per second. They have a high explosive anti-tank warhead and contain 3.93 kilos of TNT as their explosive filler. This gives them moderately good penetration as well as a very good post penetration damage effect. But they are rather overshadowed by the 9M120 missiles, the attackers. These contain a higher explosive filler with 4.48 kilos of TNT and penetrate 800mm of armour, a good 30% more than the previous Sturm missiles. Both the Sturm and the attacker have a very high travel speed. 550 meters per second is very fast. For example, the Hellfires found on most American helicopters only travel at 475 meters per second. This means both the Sturm and attackers are very easy to use, and you can kill a vehicle pretty quickly. This means you can fire a missile, hit the target, and then get back into cover very quickly. You can carry either eight attackers or eight Sturm missiles. It's worth noting, you used to be able to carry 16 of these ground attack missiles, but it was nerfed in a few previous patches, presumably to make the MI-28 seem more appealing. 
as that helicopter can carry 16 attackers. That nerf was substantial, as it effectively halved the effectiveness of this helicopter's air to ground loadout. We then have the secret weapon of pretty much all of the Soviet helicopters, the 9M39 Igla missile. This missile used to be so overpowered, it completely broke helicopter during confrontation. Back in the days before the KA-50s, it was the MI-35M which was the most OP vehicle currently in War Thunder. This is sadly long in the past though, but the Eaglers still are very effective. They are all aspect missiles, and have a rear aspect and all aspect lock range of 6km. This makes them very effective. They're also very effective against countermeasures, which means they can ignore flurs, as well as HIRSS and IRCM. While the missiles themselves only have a maximum overload of 10 Gs, they are very effective. They are long range and pretty much immune to countermeasures, so don't discount these missiles. You can carry four of them, as well as eight attackers or Sturms, or eight Igla missiles if you want to go for a pure anti-air loadout. Personally though, for the best of all worlds, I usually take eight attackers, 40 S8KL rockets, as well as four Igla missiles. That's pretty much it for the weaponry. It's a well-balanced helicopter, but it's nowhere near as powerful as some of the other helicopters in the Soviet tech tree. Never mind other helicopter nations in the game. So lads, is this helicopter worth grinding? Well, if you want to get the Mi-28 and the Mi-28NM, well, you kind of have to. But in general, the Mi-35M is kind of past its prime in War Thunder. While it is capable of getting kills, those attacker missiles really are powerful. The helicopter is a little bit too heavy to be used as a tactical helicopter, really. You can't really react quick with, with it in it, it's just a little bit too sluggish. You can't really pop up, take a shot and then quickly back into cover. Like most of the MI-24s, it responds pretty slowly to input, which kind of makes it feel like you're playing a 4 engine bomber. It kind of handles the same way. This means you kind of die a lot to ground to worm missile systems. You understand that a missile's coming at you, you try to get out the way of the missile, but the helicopter just physically won't move quick enough to actually dodge it. This isn't an issue in stuff like the Apaches, the G-Links, the other smaller helicopters in game. So while in real life these helicopters were great, they allowed six troops to move with a heavily armoured and heavily armed helicopter, but in War Thunder where none of that matters, this helicopter isn't really worth spading to be honest. It's worth unlocking just to get the Mi-28, but it isn't going to be used as soon as you get those better helicopters really. But anyway lads, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you're still here listening to my voice this far into the video then you must have liked it so how about a thumbs up or a new subscription maybe. But apart from that consider becoming a channel member and yeah thank you very much for watching lads I'll see you in another video.